Hello and welcome to another Ionic Creator tutorial video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about how we can store data to our device, uh, particularly using the local storage. So the Web Storage API specification allows us to store data in simple key value pairs. So if you've done any mobile app development, maybe doing native Android with Java or Xamarin or something like that. We already have this uh, form of persistent storage that we are familiar with. Uh, so this is kind of like the same thing. We can store um, key value pairs of strings or ints and set them so that we can then pull that data back up when we want to use it later in our application. This is really great if your app has like maybe user custom settings or presets or um, you know little pieces of information that you might want to store. Of course, there's always the option of using um, something like a database if you're actually going to store large amounts of information. Of course, you maybe want to look at something like SQLite or using the native uh, storage for Ionic. But if we're just wanting to store a couple of pieces of information, local storage is super easy to use and it doesn't require any additional plugins or things like that. So I'm going to get started by setting up my UI and I want to put on, uh, like, let's just pretend we're going to write like a little app that has a login. So I'm going to put up a couple of input boxes. The first one I'm going to call username and I am going to put it on the model, ng model as username. And the second one I'm going to call password. And if you want to get super fancy, you could change this to password so that it gives you the nice little dots, right, instead of the um, actual password. And then I'm going to put this on the model, ng model as password. And then our button, I'm just going to call this login. Uh, let's do save login. And I'm going to add a directive here for a function that I'm going to write. So we'll set up an ng click for save data. And we're going to pass it over the two items that are in these boxes. So we're going to pass over username and we're going to pass over password. Right? So those go inside of the parentheses here for that uh, method that we're going to write, that function save data. So that's on the ng click. Okay, so two other things I want to do. I want to show you how we can get the data back out. So we'll set up another button, load data, because we'll want to check if we're actually saving it. Then we'll want to check, um, it, can we actually pull the data back out? So I'm going to set up an ng click on this one for a function called get data. We don't need any parameters in the parentheses there. And then maybe just a paragraph where we can set up some template tags for username and password. Now storing passwords in any kind of format that you can get back out is obviously um, kind of rude. <laughs> it's uh, not, not recommended. Um, in fact, let me change these so we don't get confused. I'm going to name this stored user and stored password. Um, so we don't get confused with any like variable names or anything like that. Okay, so let's come down to our code section. We're going to start with uh, saving that data. So let's go ahead and set up our function. We called it save data. So this function is expecting the username and password that we're passing in when that button click happens. And it's going to get that username and password from the, the boxes. So to use local storage, we just call window.localStorage and then .setItem. And so remember, these are key value pairs. So we can name our key username, comma, what do we want our value to be, whatever is in the user variable there. So then window.localStorage.setItem, password, the pass variable. And that's it. That's all it takes to store this data. Uh, there's no committing or anything like that. So to test this and make sure we can actually see that the data is being stored, we'll set up the get data function. 
So I'm going to put these into our scoped variables for stored user and stored password. Um, but to get them back out, it's window.localstorage.getItem by its key name. So our key name was username. And then we'll do the same thing for stored password, window.localStorageGetItem password. Right, super easy stuff. So you can test this out and make sure that your data is actually going where it's supposed to go. And like my browser is trying to pre-fill in data from LastPass, I kind of hate that. Um, so username, we could type test, password, whatever you put in there. We click save, and then we can click load and we should be able to see what I typed in there. But this is persistent, so if I stop running my app and I preview again and I click load data, I should see the same key value pairs in there that uh, I've saved earlier. So very useful, like I said, if we're just going to use a, a couple of uh, keys, um, some quick data that we want to save, then this is an easy way to do it for when you just have a couple of pieces of items. So I hope this has been helpful on you being able to use local storage. It's not a very difficult um, thing to use. If you go look up the documentation, you'll see that there, there really isn't much to it. So we have our, our key, which is the name of the item. We can use get item to return it. We use set item to set it. There's also remove item. So if you've decided that you wanna delete a particular key value pair, you can use remove item. There's a couple of examples in here. Um, and this is all in the phone gap documentation. You can also go look at the W3 schools um, and, and look at their documentation for web storage. Because of course, all of this is, it's HTML5 specification. It's all usable in the browser. So as always, if you have any questions or you're having any trouble, feel free to leave me a comment and happy apping.